as Christians, do we need to read the Bible the whole way through in one year, or are there some other methods we can use to try to gain some wisdom from God's Word? My name is Jeff Milslegel, and I'm sitting in today for Bill Harris, and really glad to be able to be here today with four area pastors. I want to go ahead and get these gentlemen introduced here for you. To my immediate right here is Pastor Rick Shear from Living Hope Assembly of God in St. Mary's. Also, Chris Langstaff from Bell Center Church of Christ. Uh, Jeff Kimberly from uh, Neapolis uh, Church of Christ. And finally, Pastor Randy Davis from the Bridge Church here in Lima. Okay, gentlemen, so we, we have our questions. We're going to start out with talk about God's Word. Let me, let me go ahead and bring the first one up here. It says, I, I don't believe the Bible was to be taken literally. This is what someone has written us, okay? I don't believe the Bible was to be taken literally. People in power have been able to edit it throughout history. Who honestly knows what version we have after all of that and what we're reading is actually true? Okay, gentlemen, I know, Rick, you said you had something you wanted to throw out about that. Well, just from a, just from a historical standpoint, there, you know, we know that there's about 140,000 words in Scripture. We know and we can prove that there's about 500,000 variants within Scripture from all translations. When you start looking at that, when you remove the thes and the these and the thou variants, mm -hmm. about one-fifth of one percent actually change text. Yeah. And when you start thinking about such a small amount of text being changed, you know, you see Scripture as being consistent throughout the years. And then either you trust God or you don't trust God when he says, I will make my word survive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I know some of the other guys had some other things, but that, that's, that's the historical standpoint sure. of Scripture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Pastor Chris? Well, I, I was, when we were in our, uh, our pregame uh, meeting before we came on, we were talking about how uh, the, uh, the Scriptures have been, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls rather, have, have been found and have really shed a lot of light on mm -hmm. Uh, on the original text, and and I guess there's that age-old question: um, Do the Bibles that we have today are they inspired text, or was it the original writings that were done by the the people throughout the years? Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's that's a question that uh, that a we don't have time to answer today, <laughs> uh, and b um, it, it's a question I think that that really gets at a heart of, of the issue is uh, is God's word is God's word worthy to be trusted? Mm -hmm. should, how much emphasis should we put on scripture? And, and, and kind of to, to your point, um, you know, the, the Bible is uh, God's word. It is, it is written from him through men and it has survived the, the test of time. Um, I mean, no, no other book in the history right. of history has been uh, has been produced more has been uh, put in more languages uh, so I, I I understand what the the, the question says I, I I understand what they're trying to get at but when they says uh, when the when the writer says that they've been able to edit it I, I really think that if you look at the original texts and what we have today Yes, there's going to be differences in words. There's going to be differences in, in phraseology, but the message is still the same. Mm -hmm. the, the message of, uh, of Scripture is, is crystal clear. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that might be a better question to ask. Uh, you know, instead of it, it, it seems like the question is almost trying to gear to can I trust this book? Mm -hmm. right. you, know, you know, it seems like it. And I right. think we, we all would agree on that. That yeah, we can trust oh, this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know. What, what struck me on here is this, this idea of it was always meant to be taken literally. You know, the Bible, if you look at the Bible, there are sections of Scripture that we have to take literally, the history. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of sections of Scripture that are not literal. Mm -hmm. You know, Revelation. Is Revelation literal? Probably not. You know, that's, that's, you know, that's interpretation. You know, the, the Psalms, the... Pro, I mean, that's all... That's not literal. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, am I going to am I going to read the Bible, the history part of the Bible, the same way I read Psalms or Revelation? No, no. So you can't just take everything literally right. that's in the book. Jesus spoke in parables. Yeah. And what is parable? Yeah, that would I mean. be one great example <laughs> yeah. of the scripture is not literal because right. Jesus is speaking in a parable. Yes, right. he's yeah. right. telling a story. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yet, like you were saying, you know, it's consistent. 
it says the same story. It tells the same thing about Jesus, period. Yeah. And, and those that, that changed and translated did things to make sure those things were accurate, make right. sure those were consistent. Yes. But in the end, scribes didn't have dictionaries sitting there. Scribes couldn't get on Google and say, okay, how yeah. do I spell this? How do I phrase this? You know, they, it, it, I, it happened. I, I will say my personal Bible study, I know when I've made mistakes in biblical interpretation, it's usually because I haven't taken scripture literally enough. Sure. So I, I, I tend to want to default yeah. to the line of I'm going to take it. I may not right. understand it. Right. There's right. like, I have no idea what Ezekiel's talking about half the time, but it doesn't mean it's not true. So anyhow, Pastor Randy, exactly. I'm going to let you chime well, in. The only thing yet. I think of is, you know, the harmony of the gospel ah. uh, is the most important thing. And I, I remember being in college and we studied that and that, you know, there's many things in the Old Testament I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's in there. I don't know why, except that if you follow the, the Old Testament, it was pretty clear line all the way through. You do life God's way, good things happen. You do life selfishly, bad things happen. <laughs> and you know yeah. those, and, and that, that goes right in the New Testament. Mm -hmm, you follow mm -hmm. Jesus, you do life Jesus' way, good things happen in your life, you reap what you sow. And so whatever that looks like, and you want to fight about one scripture or this or that, you're missing the whole element of faith. Uh, that we trust God has given us instruction, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scriptures God breathed, mm. useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yeah. There's plenty in there for us to be equipped to do a good work for God. Yes. If we want to argue about other things, there's so many things in there, I have no idea. I love when people bring me stump the pastor questions and I can basically <laughs> say to them, I have no idea and it won't get you to heaven. It doesn't really matter. Mm. Right. Mm. You know, so um, let's quit arguing about things that don't matter and let's, let's focus on the things that do. And I think that's why you have denominations. That's why you have uh, different religions is because of interpretation. Mm -hmm. There's some of this, you can only interpret it one way. There's one way to get to heaven through right. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those are things I want to focus on yeah. and spend my yeah. time. Uh, other things that, you know, kind of on the edge, have at it. You know, have a Bible study, do whatever you want, but that's not me. Yeah. Uh, now, Pastor Shearer, I know you had said something earlier when we were talking about how, how it's a ribbon that goes through Scripture. Let's explain yeah. that a little bit. Yeah, you know, Scripture is, is just a ribbon of Jesus all through the Old Testament and the New Testament. So you can and find Jesus in the Old Testament. I set you up there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, you can. It's not like he just appeared in Matthew 1. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when we connect that ribbon, that's when we're truly following Christ. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that is what God is wanting from us. Yeah. Both in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Oh, wonderful. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to lead to the second question, what I teased up here earlier. And it, it's a little... Uh, <laughs> It's a bit of a pet peeve of mine. I'll just tell you right now. Okay, so this is the question. It says, I've decided to read the Bible straight through. Good for you. I'm glad you've done that. But it says, this is the first time I'm doing this and I'm committed, but I am only through Deuteronomy and some of the things I've read so far are confusing. Yeah, I, I, can, I understand that. There was a lot of brutal fighting and some of the laws are questionable. Do I read this and just move on? How does it apply to me today? Gentlemen, have at it. <laughs> discuss. Yeah, discuss that one. <laughs> well, reading through the first uh, several books of the Bible, especially when you get into Exodus and Leviticus, what was going on is, is God was taking a people that for the last 400 years, for the previous 400 years, were used to having everything done for them. Okay, this is such a good point. Yes, yes. It I, is. I know. And yeah. I, I think so. And, <laughs> and so God had to basically detail every aspect because of they their life. Slaves. They, never, they, they had, had no choice They, they didn't anything. have to think for themselves. So exactly you have all right. this detail in Exodus. Yes, right. go ahead. I'm so sorry. When, no, you're, you're fine. <laughs> so it's your show, man. So um, that's why some of these, the early books are, are difficult to get through because we bring our 21st century understanding yeah. into something that was written thousands and thousands of years ago. Yes, there's going to be there's going to be some problems, and and instead of getting bogged down, maybe look at some of these Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy passages as this is how much God loved this people that He mm. wanted to tell them how to do everything. He wanted to, to establish them as a nation that could think for themselves, 
that has free will, which I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit later. But but this this people that that had been for so long enslaved were now free. And with freedom comes tremendous responsibility. Mm -hmm. And God, I think, if I could be so bold as to speak for for God, he wanted to to get them going the right direction. So, yes, some of these passages are difficult to get through. Some of the brutal fighting that went on was God's judgment against people that were living in defiance to him. So are we saying we just ignore those passages? Just Absolutely read on them? not. Ah, okay. So, Absolutely so, not. So how do we deal with this if someone wants to read the Bible? Because it, it, it's a very well-intentioned idea. I want right. to read the Bible the right. whole way through. But how do, how do we, how do we right. encourage them to do that when they hit Leviticus and other passages? I, I think the, the, the deal I tell people all the time is Leviticus, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all that. A lot of that is, is the, uh, the sleeper scripture for people. It's where you start in Genesis. It's kind of a cool story. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait. This is good. And then you hit the, all the stuff. And you go, oh, I don't think I want to do this. It's the discipline of, of, of Scripture. The reason we read the Scripture is faith cometh by hearing and hearing from the Word of God. We also read the Scripture, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against yeah, God. Yeah. So we're reading the Bible to learn more, to be equipped, to, to do God's work. Some of it is pure discipline. Man, when I read some of those listings of the, the people, and I, I, can't, I don't know how to say them, and, and I read it, it's discipline. But even in that, there are times when you're going through a disciplined Bible reading plan that God can show up in the middle of Leviticus and go, a, a live dog is, or oh, Ecclesiastes, man. a live dog is better off than a dead lion yes. and change your life. What happened to me one day, I'm sitting there going, whoa, you know, everybody wants to be a big bad lion. Everybody wants to be the big bad wolf, but a live dog's better than a dead lion. And mm -hmm. I read that in the middle of a, a very mundane day of reading. And it changed everything for me. So God can speak through the word, through any scripture, at any place. The Old Testament, there's some old law. The New Testament, there's a new law. But in the Old Testament, there's principles and precepts that we still have to follow. The Big Ten are still the Big Ten. Thou shalt not kill is still a really good suggestion for all believers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. even though at times we feel like it. So I, I think, you know, you can't discount one without the other. I love the Bible reading plan. I tell everybody it's a great place to start. Another place to start is reading it chronologically. Mm -hmm. And there's all mm -hmm. kinds of plans on your version Bible app that yeah. you can find a plan that fits you. But start somewhere. Even if, it's, if you want to read through the Bible, start in the New Testament and read through. Take your time. Try to understand it. But read the Bible because the Bible is our defense. The yes. Bible is everything we stand on. If we don't have the word in our heart, we're going to fall. Now, we have about a minute till we go to break, and I want to get, get you to jump in here, Pastor Pastor Kimberly. So go, go ahead. And, how, how does someone do this, particularly when you, we talked earlier about you're encouraging them to read the Bible? Where do you have them start? Uh, I, uh, we we kind of, at our, at our pregame uh, meeting, as Chris called it, uh, we always, I encourage them to start in John. Start, yeah. start in John, because if you want to meet Jesus, the best place to meet Jesus is the book of John. Sure, Matthew's great, but you got to get through the so-and-so begat so-and-so who begat so-and-so, and you're like, I don't care. Um, you, so start in John, and when you get through John, I always tell them, go read, go read Paul. Mm. Start in the Paul line, you know, start in Corinthians or Romans, and read Paul. And then, you know, when you finish with that, you know, maybe get done with, then maybe start ta tackling some of the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. But reading it, Starting in Genesis and reading it straight through, you're going to get bogged down. Yes. You're going to get to Leviticus or Deuteronomy and go, mm -hmm. yeah, I, wow. I, I don't. What am, what did I, what did I, why yeah, did meet, I do this? Yeah. Meet Jesus and then seek Jesus, even in the midst well, of those words exactly. that bog you down. Yeah. Meet Jesus and seek Jesus. Because once you've yeah. met Jesus and John, when you start reading the Old Testament, you see Jesus intertwined in the Old Testament. Yeah, it's just like you were saying, yep. that ribbon yep. that goes that the ribbon. whole way through. Yep. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to have a walk worthy of the Lord, to walk with Him, and maybe touch a little bit on what heaven is really like. We're going to do that when we come back next with more Life Questions. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion.
and welcome once again to Life Questions. All right, gentlemen, what does it mean to live a holy life? I mean, that's one of the questions that come up and, and you think about, you know, we're, as, as pastors, I know you guys are always trying to encourage your people to, to walk with the Lord, and we use various phrases like that, but it kind of bottom lines, what does it mean to live a holy life? You know, to live a life pleasing unto the Lord is following, you know, His description for life. Mm. And I think so many times there's things that we make holy and we think of a monk in some, you know, monastery somewhere and uh, that's how you get holy. Uh, it is, you know, Jesus is written, be holy because I am holy. Mm. Uh, but I go back to the holiness. I break it down to, to my Matthew 22, 34 through 40 scripture of Jesus answering the question, what's the most important uh, commandment in all the law? And he says, love him and love each other. Yeah. To me, holiness starts with, can you be kind to the people around you? Can, is, is the love of Christ come out of you? Do you feel empathy for people in need? Do you have compassion for, for those that, that, have, you know, that are lost? And, and I think so many times we make holiness some super spiritual type thing. And, and I think it starts with just the, the what part of, you know, be kind to one another can't we understand? And, uh, mm. you know, I make a joke sometimes that some of the meanest people in the world go to church every Sunday. <laughs> It's like, man, Unfortunately, what, that's true, what, yes. what, what's wrong? Let's go. Because I think the love of Christ is, is an outflow of, of a holy life that God has created something inside of you. Mm -hmm. And then it comes out. Well, the word holy means set apart. And when you, when you, when you start thinking about what does it mean to be a holy life, you know, that, that age old preacher illustration, if you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Right. In other words, are you living a set apart life? Or when somebody looks at your life, do they see no change? Do they see a person who doesn't uh, love other people, who uh, their faith makes, makes absolutely no difference in their life? Or do they see a person that's living by the fruit of the spirit that we read about in Galatians? Mm -hmm. Love, joy, peace, mm -hmm. patience, kindness. If, if a person is, is wanting to be holy, then they're going to be different. They're, sure. they're going to react to situations differently. They're going to respond uh, differently when, when they're attacked because people are looking. If, if and, and notice I said if, that's a big if. If people know you're a Christian, do they see any difference in the way you live your life? Mm -hmm. if, if they see you getting angry uh, at, at wanting harm to come to other people, then they're going to say, well, if that's what it means to be a Christian, I don't want any part of it. Right. And I'm, I'm pretty sure Jesus has a word for people that live like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Hypocrites. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> maybe. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 are, so it's more than just keeping a set of rules. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I think part of it is, you know, Chris, I think too, it's, it's when we mess up, recognizing it and being able to apologize or to correct it because none of us are going to make it every time. You know, the Bible says be angry and sin not. And I got angry at a NFL football game a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't sin. But I was sure angry and I was real close to sinning because <laughs> uh, I wanted to knock the guy out, you know. But, I, I, you know, it's, it's one of those times in life, I'm a guy. And, and if, if you encroach on my, my space enough, at some point I'm going to say, dude, back down, you know. Mm -hmm. And I did. I let him know very un. You know, <laughs> but I didn't sin. I didn't hit anybody. I didn't start a fight. But I let them know, hey, back off. Get off of me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'll, give, I'll give you a lane and say you were drunk, but that don't mean I am and stay back, you yeah. know. So it's, it's the whole thing of, of a real life. And, it, yes, set apart and different, but different in that sometimes, hey, I messed up. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> and I think that goes a long way as a believer because people don't see good uh, confession or, or profession of mistake or, you know, please forgive me. And uh, I think that goes with it is because we're not going to get it right every time, unfortunately. And uh, people are watching and yeah. uh, we just got to be there. And when somebody says, will you forgive me as a believer? We also say, yes, I do. And mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah. that's important. Yeah. We, you know, James, I think is a good, good one to address this. You know, think about uh, Matthew talking about Jesus's half brothers, not believing in him. <laughs> And then later in the New Testament, we see James talking about faith and works yeah, and doing yeah. uh, uh, for Christ. And he, he's addressing the apathy within the church. I think you're absolutely right. I think there's a huge difference between saying we're sorry that we got caught and being sorry. Yeah. And I see we, we see that all through uh, society today that people are sorry they got caught but aren't truly repentant mm -hmm. because nothing has changed going back to that holy 
uh, life being separate. Sure. And, uh, and, and we've got to get focused uh, again on Jesus. Uh, we could spend a lot more time on this because there's a lot of things to say, but I want to get to this question. Okay, so um, this, this is kind of a heavy one here. I want to make sure we cover this. It says, my friend is not a Christian. When I talk to him about faith, he tells me he just wants to live his life yeah, his way now, and he'll accept Jesus later. I don't like his stance, but I also know that Jesus saved a thief on a cross hours before death. How can I continue to be a witness to him now? Pastor Jeff, I'm going to throw that one out to you there to kick it oh, off. Oh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> um, here's what I, I was thinking back to what we just talked about, about holiness and being that set apart and, and letting your friends see the difference that Christ is making in your life. Yeah. And, and if you don't have to preach at them with words, just, you know, some of the best witness is just silence. You know, and just letting your life speak for itself oh. without words. You know, uh, there's a saying and it says, preach at all times when necessary, use words. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we have to do. We, and, and so, yeah, he may, it may be, you know, a deathbed confession, you know, hours before he dies. But if you don't take the time to witness by the way you live your life, You've, you're missing an opportunity, right? And and and, and you can't. We can't do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell my people uh, at our church, um, our main focus is three is three things. That it's out of Matthew, uh, love God, love people, change the world. And I said, if you love God, it'll outflow in the way you love people, and by the way you love people, you'll change the world. Mm -hmm. And and that's what we have to do, and that's what this person needs to do is just love God and let that outflow into the way He loves. They love this person. And, 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 and just pray that God, you know, mm -hmm. knocks him over the head by, with a two-by-four. Not <laughs> literally, <laughs> figuratively, but, you know, at some point God becomes real to him and goes, yeah, I need that in my so life. So what would you say to somebody who's, who's saying that this individual evidently is telling this other individual that uh, he just wants to live his life now and he'll just accept Jesus later? How, how do you respond to that? <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, in theory... I guess that sounds good, providing you know when you're, you're going to die. die. That's like an important part of this uh, equation, well, isn't right, it? Right, yeah. because I, and I don't think anybody around this table would disagree with the fact that it's never too late while you're still living. But the minute, the minute that we close our eyes in death, um, yeah. It's, it's go time yeah. and yeah. you will either go be with, with the Lord or you won't. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, it, it sounds like, and again, I know we got to be careful reading into these questions, but it sounds like this, this person's friend has a pretty dim view of Christianity. And unfortunately, a lot mm. of times look at, people look at Christianity as uh, no fun, as uh, well, look at all the stuff you can't uh, do. Boy, yeah, that sounds kind of boring. And then I'll, right, yeah. right. And, and anybody that has spent any time at all living the Christian life will understand this isn't bad. None of these principles that I read in scripture are bad for me. Mm -hmm. And, and what is your definition of fun? If your definition of fun is, is going out, getting a bag on every night and, and sleeping with whoever you happen to go home with, um, that, that's, not, uh, that, that's not a definition of fun that I think very many people would subscribe to. So, so those of us that have been Christians for a while, we understand there is freedom in Christ. We don't have to live like that anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, can, we can live more fulfilled lives. And, and you know, I, I, what the person wants to, don't give up on this person. Exactly. Don't, yeah. don't say, well, they're never going to come to faith in Christ. I'm not going to. No, if anything, redouble your efforts mm -hmm. and, and show them the love of Christ that's available if, if they would just ask. When, you're, when you come to Christ, your definition of fun changes. Ah, okay. Explain that a little bit. Um, well, like Chris said, you know, before you become a Christian, your definition of fun is, you know, getting knocked down drunk every night and you know, going home with different people every night. And that's fun. That's exciting. But when you become a Christian, you find excitement in other things like being with other people, you know, being with other Christians and growing and knowing more and, and, and trying to and, and sharing your faith becomes exciting because it's your, your priorities have shifted. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's and, and it takes a while to get those priorities to shift. And, and, and you've got to really, you've got to want to. 
you got to want to have I your I think, though, we've got to be careful not to assume that his friend is a party animal. Yes. Agreed. Uh, Agreed. We, we've Agreed. got to be careful that yep. his friend isn't Agreed. trying to live a good life. Agreed. Uh, because that is the most dangerous, <laughs> that is the most dangerous definition of fun, trying to live a good life on our own. And so we've got to be careful uh, we don't yes. group yes. that together because I agree with you that our definition changes. Right. However, that doesn't mean that every person that doesn't know Christ right. is a drunk, is a party oh, animal. Absolutely. Is, and, yeah. and so we've got to be careful yeah. that we don't fall into that trap because the ones that are trying to live good on their own may be the hardest to reach with Christ yeah, the mm. because I'm a good person. They, I'm a good person, right. yeah. you know, yeah. and... Uh, and, and that's why I say in the same mode, I say some of the meanest people go to church yeah, every Sunday. Exactly. Some of the greatest people never go to church at all. Mm -hmm. And they have godly characteristics. They're kind to people. They treat mm -hmm. people with respect. They, they, they're honest and, and they're loyal. They have integrity. And they're great people, but they don't have a relationship with Christ. And that's, mm. that's the difference. Have you asked Christ come to your life? Is he the difference of why you're good or you're just, you were raised right and you're a good person? Mm. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, and I think that's the whole thing for me is, when you have a person that you're trying to witness to, the greatest witness you can be is an example. Yeah. And I, I think the hardest part of most Christians is when, when everything's going good, their faith is good. But when anything happens, their faith falls apart. What about that would I want if I don't have Christ? Mm. I want my faith to work in the good and the bad. Yeah. And I think if people see our faith working when we're going through the toughest time of our lives, then they know, wow, I don't know what they got, but I want that. Yeah. If it works only when things are good, who wants that? Yeah. That's good for anybody. How's oh, that any different? Yeah, that's no you different know, than the rest of the world. It goes back to the old yeah. fashioned show and tell. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm telling you of my faith, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to show you yeah. my faith even in the bad times. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, yes. All right, well, gentlemen, we are almost done here with this program. Thanks so much for watching Life Lessons. Uh, life, <laughs> life's Questions. I see, I told you I was going to mess up the thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> Life's Questions, and we're so glad to have you watching us today. Yeah, we've covered a lot of groundwork, and I'm sure you can go back and look at the show again. There's a lot more we could discuss. we got four great gentlemen here. Join us next time as we discuss more of Life's Questions. I'm Jeff Milslegel. We'll see you next time. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>